What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can set up a Power World server using the Steam dedicated server. Previously, I did a video on setting up a dedicated server using Steam CMD. If you don't own the game on Steam, that's the easiest way to do it. Just to be clear, you can use either of these methods, either this one or the previous video, in order to host your Power World dedicated server. If you're interested, check the description down below for a guide on how to do this one. Also, if you'd like to find out how to play with your friends without needing a dedicated server, check the description down below for a link to that video as well. This video will be focusing on this dedicated server over here. When you search for Power World on your Steam account, you'll find it here. Simply download this and install it to follow along with this guide. Once your Power World dedicated server is downloaded, right click, choose manage and choose browse local files. Inside of here, we have all of our server files and everything required for our server to work properly. Let's quickly configure our server. We'll open default Power World settings with any text editor such as Notepad. I'll be using Sublime Text. What we need to do is copy everything from this opening bracket here all the way to the very last line here. Right click, copy. Then we need to take this and go to PAL, saved, config, Windows Server, scroll down and open up palworldsettings.ini as well. What you'll do is in this empty file, paste in the code that we just copied and save it. Before we close it, we need to edit a few things, including server name, description, admin password, server password if you'd like, and that's really it. If you'd like to use Archon to run commands remotely using a separate piece of software, you can change this to true as such. The server name I'll set to let's say troubleshoots server and the admin password. I'll make something nobody can guess such as that. Perfect. We'll save this file and leave it open as we'll be returning to this in just a moment. Then we'll head back a few files all the way back to PAL server. So out of Windows server, config saved, PAL. Now we're in PAL server next to the main exe. There are two ways of launching our server. The first way is creating a script in this folder, much like with the Steam CMD version that we can run and start our server. Otherwise, you can launch it directly from Steam using the launch button over here. As this is a bit easier, this is the method I'll show you, but in the description down below, you'll find a link to this article that talks about the script method as well using this here. What we're looking at is the third piece of text with all of these options in it down here. So in the description, head to the first link, scroll down until you see preparing to launch server a bit further, and it's this long one over here. Click this button to copy the text, and with all of these commands copied, right click Power World dedicated server, choose properties, and in here where it says launch options, paste it in here. All the way at the very start, we'll be changing the server name to whatever you want, obviously, port, players, etc. If you don't remember what you previously typed, check the notepad window that you should still have open for your server name, etc. At the very end, there's this epic app equals Power Server. This is supposed to make your server public and it's supposed to add it to the server list according to the Power World developers. However, the server list is currently very overcrowded and there are known issues preventing servers from showing up on the list. So if you don't see yours, that's why. Now we can close this and launch our Power World server. When we do, you'll get two options. I'll usually choose open and start as community server for it to show up on the list. Otherwise, choose the first if you're playing privately and if you're playing privately, remove this last argument here. So I'll choose the second one and play. Then a blank window opens up. This is the server and this is what it looks like when it's running. As long as this window is open, your server is running and people can play on it. I'll fire up Power World, then head across to join multiplayer game, which is only available in the full version of the game. The Game Pass version only lets you join multiplayer games with invite codes, so this won't work there. You'll need to own the full version of the game in order to play on the server. So join multiplayer game, then at the very bottom, you'll see this bit of text here. This is your IP address, colon, the port of the server. By default, if you're running it on your own PC, you'll be using 127001 to point to your own computer and join your own server running on the same computer very easily. I'll click connect, just like that, we should be dropped into our server. There we go. Oh, don't know why I'm underground. Anyways, we can run in chat slash admin password. I could type 
followed by our password. And upon doing so, you can see your now admin. Now you can run admin commands on your own server and everything is set up properly. However, at this point, nobody else can join you. Why is that? Well, we need to sort out the firewall and our ports as well. It's very simple. In order for anyone to join, you need to allow the game server through your firewall. If you're using a third party firewall, such as an antivirus with one, these steps will be slightly different. I'll be showing you the Windows firewall steps in the description down below. Once again, in this same article, we'll scroll down further until we see this colorful section here. These will automatically allow ports 27015, 6, 25575, and 8211 through your Windows firewall, allowing people on the same local network as you to join your server. Simply click this button to copy, then hit start, type in PowerShell, and run this as administrator. Now inside of here, right click to paste, paste anyway, and hit enter a few times to make sure everything's run through. Now you can scroll up and double check everything worked well, and if it did, great, you've now allowed all of these ports through your Windows firewall and people next to you should be able to join. As stated in this next bit, we'll be running IP config to find out what our local IP address is so people next to us can join us. Once again, in the PowerShell window or just a command prompt window, if you closed it, you can reopen it. We'll be typing in IP config and hitting enter to see all the information about all of our network adapters. What we're looking for is the way that we're connected to the internet, in my case, ethernet. Look for IPv4 address and this one over here is your local IP 192.168.150. Someone connected to the same router as me sitting next to me would be able to punch in this colon 8211 in the in-game join section and they'll be dropped into my server. Pretty simple. But in order for people to play with you over the internet, there's a few more steps. Keep this IPv4 number in mind. What we need to do is port forward. This may sound very difficult and distressing, but it's actually rather easy. However, as there are so many different kinds of routers, I won't be able to show you a guide for every single one of them. Instead, you'll need to look up a guide for your particular router to see exactly how you can port forward or application forward as some routers call it. What I can give you, however, is a general guide. You'll eventually land up on a page that looks something like this using the ports we just allowed through our Windows firewall, which you'll also find down here at the very end, we'll be forwarding them to our computer. So in order to forward these, we'll copy the first one. So 8211 and we'll enter it wherever required on our router's setup page. For me, I'll need to enter it in both external and internal. As it's asking me for a range, I'll need to enter the same number twice. As such, the protocol for 8211 is UDP and finally it's asking me for my local IP. We found this previously with the IP config command and for me it was 192.168.150. All I need to enter here is 50. However, you may need to type in the entire thing and of course yours may look completely different to mine. I'll add it and now we forwarded this port to our computer. Now we just need to do the same for the rest of the numbers here. Sometimes you'll be able to enter them in comma separated. Other times you can enter a range so we can handle two birds with one stone. For 27015 and 6, as I can enter a range, I'll type in 27015 to 27016 as such to do both of these in one rule. Then we need to port forward for both TCP and UDP, so I'll select that. Otherwise, if you don't have the option to choose both of them, you'll need to add it once for TCP and once for UDP. Then entering my same IP and adding new, there we go. Finally, 25575, copy this, paste it into all of these once again, and TCP as well as UDP, my IP, add, and now we're successfully port forwarded, and people outside our local network should be able to join our server, as long as it's running. What do you need to do? Well, simply Google what is my IP, take whatever is given back to you, either on Google or one of the first few links, and you can use that for other people to join your server. It'll be your external IP, colon, 821. One, they can click join and they'll be dropped in right next to you. If you're having some kind of issues port forwarding, make sure that your ports are actually open. And if you're not entirely sure, do call your ISP to make sure you're even allowed to port forward as some ISPs block it on lower tier packages. You can use third party software like Hamachi or Tailscale to get around port forwarding, but port forwarding is definitely the easiest of the bunch once you know how to set it up on your router. Also a quick note, if you have multiple routers chained between you and the internet, so for example, the fiber router to one router to the next, 
all the way to your PC in a straight line. As such, you'll need to port forward from each one to the next one along the chain. So from your ISP's router to your first router, then from your first router to your second, from your second to your PC. Once you've done that, everything is port forwarded properly. If you need help with port forwarding, you'll find multiple guides linked in the description down below, as well as the article, so you can hopefully get everything set up really quickly. That's it. As long as your server is running here, people can join your server. If you need to launch it again, use it from Steam here. And of course, to save and close your server, while you could just close this window over here, it's not the best for saving and making sure you lose no progress. In order to do so, in the in-game chat, once you've run slash admin password, and entered your admin password here. As such, you'll need to run two commands. The first one to save your server, which is slash save as such. And the second command is slash do exit as such. This closes your server. So this window should vanish or close entirely. And the game server is now stopped. That's it. You will need a relatively powerful computer to run the Power World server. So if you have a powerful computer or a certain friend does, they should be the ones hosting it. If you want to run it on a separate computer, you can do that, but you may find it easier to use the Steam CMD method to host it on a different computer, especially if you don't have a second account that owns the game. You'll find a link to that in the description down below. Once again, you don't need a dedicated server to play with friends. It's just a way of leaving your server up 24 seven so anyone can join it if you'd like to join each other without the need for all of this. Once again, check the description down below for a guide on how to do that. That's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helped you. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.